Hi friends, it's Miss Joy. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite make at home DIY air dry clay recipes. It's very simple and very cost effective. It's just cornstarch, which is gluten free and baking soda, which is very inexpensive. You can use these smaller packages, generic or um, this giant box of baking soda I got at Walmart. I think it was two or $3. So it's very cost effective. This air dry clay feels very similar to Model Magic by Crayola. So it's soft and um, easy to work with and it's just really fun and lovely. So let's get started. You will need one cup of cornstarch, two cups of baking soda, a cup and a quarter of cold water, and you'll also need a nonstick pot. Um, I'm just gonna use a cooking uh, saucepan, but any sort of nonstick pot and a wooden spoon. I need a large bowl, and at the end, you're going to want a damp towel, even just a washcloth or a kitchen towel to have a moist layer over the clay as you're working with it so it doesn't start to dry out while you're working with it. So I'm going to set the bowl aside and mix directly into my nonstick pot. We need a cup of the cornstarch and two cups of the baking soda. So we're gonna mix this up a little bit and then add the water, just so that we don't get big clumps when we pour the water in. Um, this is not like a big old mixing project. This is just a light blending together of the two ingredients. Now we're going to add one and a quarter cup of cold water and mix it up. So we are going to bring this over onto the stovetop and cook it on a low to medium setting until the mixture starts to change consistency and we'll have the consistency of mashed potatoes. Okay, so I'm just starting to put it onto a low to medium temperature. So I am stirring slowly and not too vigorously, but I am kind of smashing down any lumps and bumps that I feel with my wooden spoon. Does not have to be perfectly smooth. So the consistency doesn't look any different really, but you can start to feel the consistency, the texture changing through my spoon and the way it's sit hitting against the bottom of the pan. I can sort of feel it's becoming a little bit more uh, tacky, almost like a taffy sort of feel, but it's still very liquidy. There's just a, a, a bit of a, a stick or a push now, so I can just start to feel the consistency changing. So we are just a few more minutes in. I would say that we're kind of at a thick pancake batter consistency and I'm starting to feel the thickness change. It doesn't look very different, but from the feel of the wooden spoon against the nonstick pan, it's almost feeling like there's some taffy thickness to it. There we go. We're starting to get some, some solid dough forming. So we went from absolutely no chunks, no lumps and bumps in the beginning to as it cooks and it thickens, we're starting to arrive back at some thickness here. And honestly, this is easier than even making pancakes. The fact that it's only two ingredients takes very little time and, uh, it's just, it's very rewarding. I would say out of all the recipes I've done, this is the least amount of work and it's pretty quick and cheap. All right, so I'm taking this off the stove and putting it on a hot pad. The consistency changed rather quickly. As soon as the chemistry started to happen, we, we've in a very short amount of time, less than a minute or two minutes, we went from, uh, I would say a pancake batter consistency to a frosting 
consistency. And then as, as soon as it started getting that like um, taffy, frostingy sort of um, thickness, then it quickly started to um, solidify and I was just folding it over itself on the stove. And then once it's thickened up, I could stick my hands right in it, but I'm going to let it cool first. So we'll put it into the bowl and let it cool for a few minutes, but we must cover it with a wet towel. All right, so I'm just gonna do a paper towel for it there. Now I try to use towels instead of paper towels a lot, but I know not everybody has kitchen towels, so you could even just use a clean, wet t-shirt. And um, I have to say this whole project has cost less than $5 and taken less than five minutes. So it's just been about three minutes or so, not very long. It still feels warm, but it's not too hot to touch. Okay, and let's see how it is. Now this is half a batch. So if you just wanna half the batch, it will make the size of, I don't know, I'd say, smaller than a softball but bigger than a baseball is half a batch and I'm just kind of scraping off anything that's stuck to the bottom of the bowl. This is very similar in consistency to Model Magic which is not cheap um, and if any of the design work you want to do requires color. You can always mix in food coloring or you can wait till it dries and color it with paint or a marker. It's a little bit um, crumbly for rolling out into a worm, but um, you can kind of pat it back together with your fingers after you've rolled it out. And you will notice that in the few minutes that you work with it, the consistency will start to change. So just from working with it a few 30 seconds to a minute, my hands have absorbed some of that moisture and it does roll out well into a worm without crumbling too much. There are, you know, a few crumbles that get left behind. So I would suggest having your child work on the table or on a tray. Um, even just giving them a paper plate to work on would, would be fine too in some scenarios. And um, you'll notice just a few crumbles over here. But for the most part, I think for low budget and less than five minutes, um, this is pretty good. So I can pinch it back together and make shapes. I can make a um, big thick pancake and smooth out any of the crumbles and then press your student's hand into it to make a footprint or a handprint. Uh, once you've got it the way you want it, you leave it and don't touch it and don't cover it for overnight. And then it will come to a nice hardened consistency and I will show you what that looks like. So here's the final product, uh, it's dried. When I let it dry overnight on the paper plate, it started to turn a little brown. So I realized it needed more air circulation. And then when I saw what was happening, I moved it over onto a paper towel for the rest of the drying process. It does get a little crumbly if you play with it too much or if you rehydrate it. Um, but for the most part, um, you, you do have to pick at it a lot to get those crumbles. So it's it's pretty sturdy if you're going to use it as a decoration and not touch it. Uh, patting it out or rolling it out and using cookie cutters is fun. Rolling it into a worm and then making a shape with that line is fun. You can, um, once it's dry, you can color on it with marker or use paint, a thicker paint like an um, acrylic or a craft paint or a tempera is probably best. 
but if you have a watercolor, you can try it with a watercolor as long as it's not getting too saturated. So try to use um, more pigment and less water. Um, but have fun with it, guys. I would suggest also making the dough right before you're going to play with it and keeping it covered with plastic wrap and a wet paper towel or a wet um, kitchen towel while you're working with it so it doesn't dry out. If you make this a day ahead, it's going to get too crumbly. If you make this hours and hours ahead of time, it's going to get too crumbly. So um, make this right before you need to use it. So I'm just going to play around with this and show you that you can draw with markers on it. And once it's dry, I'll show you with paint. I'll show you with crayons. Here's just playing around with some crayons. It does take the crayon color, um, but if you start to color too hard, it can lift up some of the not sure if you can see this on camera. It does get a little crumbly, but if you're pressing lightly with a crayon, that would work. Um, it takes markers really nicely, and I'll show you with paint. So this is trying it with a watercolor paint, but I'm going to try to pick up more paint than water. I just use a little water to activate the paint. I'm spinning my brush lightly round and round, waking up that paint, and then it works very nicely. So I'm going to actually try to get it a little too wet on purpose and see what happens. It's actually not crumbling, so this is this is working well. If you use crayon first and then go over it, that wax will resist the paint that goes on top of it, so that can be a fun effect. And then I'm going to try with some craft paint. which also works really well. So I'm just um, playing around to show you the different finishing options. You can also use a food coloring when you've mixed it up, um, separate into little balls and then blend your food coloring in or just finish it off with a color, paint, marker, crayon, whatever you wish. So this is messy, but I just wanted to experiment with the finishing options. So this is more about uh, a test to show you than to have it look beautiful in the end. But I hope that you make some beautiful projects and have a lot of fun with this. And please do take pictures and show me what you've made. Okay, guys, have fun.